doing? We are at the second day of Ancient Oil. Are we excited? Look, we are your co-hosts. I am Daria, and this is... I am Rika, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, this is our first time. I need y'all to be in the chat. Just give us some thumbs up. Tell us where you're coming from, because we have a lot of people from all, everywhere, right? South Carolina. Did you see anybody else from Florida, Richmond, Richmond, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Maryland? Everybody. <laughs> Look, Philadelphia. Look, y'all, it's the second day. And are we already tired? <laughs> Listen, I am full, Daria. I am full. I hope you guys are expecting because you are in for a life changing experience. God's spirit is so thick in here. I hope you guys are expecting. We bond every distraction, you guys. Get into a space because God has something for you, just for you. There is a word that is going to come across that pulpit that's going to change your life forever. Unusual things are happening, Daria. Unusual things. I love that. Happenings. Unusual miracles. Yes. Unusual blessings. Unusual favor. Oh, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Y'all, look. Conference started on Sunday it through did. Prophetess Trina Harrison, it you guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> y'all, we have expected and we've we've experienced the great, the giant T. Renee today, and also Melissa. So, y'all, Barbara Calloway from last night, yes. Prophetess Barbara Calloway yes. from last night, she and today me. we have the very own. <laughs> Dr. Medina Pulling. Oh my okay. God. I call her Jesus girl. I call her the supernatural woman yes. because if you guys heard her testimonies, she has a plethora of testimonies of yes. miracles that God has done. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah. What was you about to say about T. Renee? Um, Prophetess T. Renee, oh, we went back. You talk about ancient oil. Oh, yeah. oh, I felt like I was back with my great grandmother back like 10 plus years Ooh. ago. She had us all laid out. Laid. It went from the sermon to intercession, okay, <laughs> to deliverance. Like, yes. it was a whole entire oh, yeah. experience. Oh, yeah. It was a whole lot of travailing. Oh, and mind you, I was in my home. Look, so I know the oiliners know how I felt. When she was praying, when she was preaching, when she was teaching, I was laid out on my floor. So we know that the ancient oil, no matter where it is, it hits your home, it hits your spirit. So y'all, today, we're about to experience the supernatural. Believe it. Believe it. And come expecting, because ancient oil is not something that you pick up and leave on the floor. Something that is, it's always, and it's, it's everywhere, right? It yeah. is, and Pastor uh, Prophetess Kimberly yes. Ray, yes. she talked about the many oils that God, you know, instructed Moses to create. And she said, I love what she said about, there's an oil for each, each season of your life. Yes. Ooh, that's so good. For victory, yes. for warfare, to, to, to give you that, that, that strength to keep going. In every season of your life, you have the anointing of God. Woo! You are not alone. You are not alone. Look, we already Things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. We just so full, y'all. We supposed to just be hyping y'all up. But as you can see, the oil is just, it's flowing. And we're at the ancient oil conference. What better to have an overflow? I want to be holy. I want to be holy. <laughs> Y'all, look, we have some beautiful things popping. I just forgot to say, we have the psalmist, Melissa Bethina. She's singing today, and we know she, we, she allows the Lord to do whatever the Lord leads. And at Ancient Oil, that's what you have to do. We're just vessels. We're reminded that God is the one who brings the oil. So I just want to emphasize, we're about to go into service, but I want you to get into an atmosphere where you're by yourself, that you just allow the Holy Spirit to come into you right now. We're about to go into service. We love you. Come expecting the unusual. We love y'all so much. <laughs> love y'all.
experience. How many of you, this is your first time attending an Ancient Oil Conference? Come on, stand up on your feet so we can give you a big, big welcome. Yay! So we're going to take this quick opportunity just to hug each other, welcome each other. I know if you were here earlier, we already hugged, we prayed together, we loved on each other. But take this time now just to welcome your brothers and sisters. to welcome each and every one of you to our second night of Ancient Oil. Like I said, if you were here today, we started off this morning with Pastor Kimberly Ray, y'all. Woo! Speechless. And then we were completely wiped out by Pastor T. Renee Glenn. Amazing. So please, please, please make sure that you are here tomorrow for another powerful, powerful day of prayer and impartation. And then, of course, um, tomorrow we have in the morning Apostle Gail McKinney. Yes! And then for midday session, we have Prophetess Sharday Martin. It's going to be amazing. And then tomorrow night, we're going to close out the night with Prophet Todd Hall all the way from Florida. So, of course, we know it's going to be an amazing time. And on Saturday, we are going to have Bishop S.Y. Younger, yes, and Pastor David Wilford is going to be our psalmist. So we are in for even more of a move of God. So please, please make sure if you have not gotten a ticket to attend the day sessions, it's not too late to register, you can still do that. Also, out in the front, we have an entire merch section for Trina Harrison Ministries Ancient Oil. So please make sure, even if you need to run out there really quick, grab you some merch. Um, after service, they're gonna be out there. And on Saturday, we want everybody to wear your Ancient Oil merch. So please, you gotta get you a t-shirt so you don't feel left out. And we're gonna take a big group picture. It's gonna be incredible. So please make sure that you get your merch. And also, Pastor Trina Harrison has some amazing things coming forth. So in order to stay connected, we want you to scan the QR code right here, and you will be a part of her um, text group. So you'll be the first to know when things drop, when things come down the pipeline. So you will stay in on the know with Pastor Trina Harrison Ministries. So everybody, tonight's going to be amazing. Let's go ahead and set the atmosphere, begin to worship. Everybody stand to your feet, lift your hands, and we're going to go into prayer. Well, hello, Gathering Place, D.C. Welcome. Let's go before the throne of grace to our God. Let's posture our hearts and our minds to set this atmosphere for his presence, to move in this house, to move mightily. So, Father God, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. Father, we send up your name, O oh God. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for being
There is no one like our Lord. There is no one like our Lord. There is no one like my Lord. You are Yahweh. Yahweh. All is your name. Never want to take it in vain. You're singing it now. Come on. It's on you. Yahweh. 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 Oh. oh, come on, saints. Holy is. Can we break the music? Clap your hands while you're singing. Yahweh. you 
a great reminder of who our God is for us. When we praise and we posture ourselves to worship him, it is our reminder of who our God is. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the, the everyday. Sometimes, all the time. Especially depending on what your everyday looks like. You can get caught up in your everyday. But I know for me, sometimes I need the reminder so I'll say to myself, what a mighty God I serve. What a mighty God I I have to tell myself who he is. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth. Whoa. What a mighty God we serve. This is not on our list. But I just feel like we're here. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. I have to remind myself sometimes. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, you're so good. What a privilege to carry. Every single thing, everything to God. What peace 
we often forfeit. And oh, what needless pains we begin to bear. Ah, oh, because we do not care. So, Father, uh, even if it's stepping out of the norm, uh, I just want to pause and say thank you. I don't want to sing it to you right now. I just want to tell you thank you. I want to tell you that you are such a good God. I want to tell you that you are everything to us. I want to tell you that we're nothing without you. I want to tell you that we know how big you are. We know who you are. We know that you're holy. We know that you are sovereign. We know that there's no one like you and there will never be. We know that you are Yahweh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We know that you're Jehovah. We know it. We know it. We know that you're Alpha. We know you are Alpha. And Omega. Whoa. Worship you, high Lord. Whoa, you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. Yeah, and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. We give you all. Oh, come on, we worship you in this place. Yeah, you are with everything we have from our bellies. You are, we know it, we know it. Attempt to call, Yeah, we give you Come on. Come on, ain't 
ancient oil. Come on, ancient oil. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to bless God and set this atmosphere. Shift this atmosphere. Set the temperature in the room. Come on. Come on, set it with your praise. Set it with your worship. Set it with your expectation tonight. So worthy, 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 worthy. Come on. Come on, you're here now. You might as well praise him. You're here tonight. You might as well worship him. Come on, you came here. You might as well give him everything tonight. Give him everything tonight. Give him everything tonight. Ho, 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 ho. things that's going to happen tonight. God is going to move tonight. Let's make him feel welcome. Let's make him feel welcome. Come on, don't stop giving him glory. Give him honor. Give him glory. We worship you, our Lord. 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 We give you glory. We give you honor. Yeah, you won. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the glory. you're worthy. We give it to you because there's none like you. We give it to you because you're a mighty God. We give it to you because we owe you our best. We give it to you because you keep on thinking your midst. We give it to you because you're a worthy God. We give it to you because you bless us. Yay! We give it to you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We worship you, our Lord. Because you are worthy to be praised. Yes, God. If for no other reason, it's because he's worthy. Yes, Lord. If you forget about everything else, it's just because he's worthy. He's worthy. And we owe him praise. We owe him praise. We owe him praise. You may be seated. And if God's presence is certainly here. I want to scream one good time, but I'm so hoarse already. I'm going to be a baritone by the time this conference is over because I'm giving him everything. Do I have anyone that is willing to give God everything you've got? Because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. I'm moving kind of quickly because we have a lot, again, we have a, a, a night full, a packed night. But give yourselves a hand for coming back out. Some of us have been here all day from very, very early this morning. God has been with us. God has been with us. Pastor Kimberly Ray came. And she explained to us what ancient oil is. Yes, Lord Jesus. And then the gift of T. Renee Glenn came through here. And so I don't have any more voice because even when I don't have a microphone, I'm still yelling. You better believe I'm over in my corner or somewhere yelling, giving God everything everything because he's worthy again i thank you for participating in ancient oil i pray that you've been blessed 
And like I said, every round goes higher and higher and higher, and we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into the things of God. And so I thank you. I do want us to put our hands together for our online audience. We have not officially greeted them. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope that you're getting something. I hope that you're not just watching in your living room and in your kitchen and you're not participating. I hope that you are participating and running around your house um, because there's one thing about the ancient oil, it flows. It reaches where you are. Yeah, don't, don't do that to me because... <laughs> Uh, so I, I hope that um, I hope that you've been enjoying. I don't know where my camera is at, but I hope that you've been enjoying uh, what's been happening here to our online audience, and again to all of you who have participated. This has been one blessed conference, one blessed conference, and tonight is only going to be greater. I thank God for the gifts that are in the house. So I'm going to move really quickly. You know why I'm up here? I'm up here to raise an offering. Amen. <laughs> I'm up here uh, making a way possible for you to sow your seed um, because you love God and you honor God and you appreciate the fact that it was only him that made a way for something like this to happen. I tell you, it was no goodness of my own. It's only God that can cause this night to be what it is and cause this week to be what it is. And so I'm asking you to, to dig deep and, and, and give because you honor God. I told my church on Sunday, where you at gathering place? I thank God for you. I thank God. Do it again. Yeah. Do it again one more time. Oh. I love it because I hear chains breaking every time the noise goes up. Can you imagine how hell feels when you let out a scream like that? I think hell gets terrified. Woo! I think hell knows that you've got the victory when you scream like that. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Whatever is chasing you gets scared and it begins to run the other way because it hears victory in it. Do it again! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I told my church that I stopped giving because I'm looking for something in return. And I started giving just because I honor God. And ever since my mentality changed, my bank account changed. Because one thing is connected to the other. And I'm not telling you to sow everything. I'm, not, I'm telling you to be wise with your money. I'm telling you to pay your bills. But I'm also telling you to prioritize and realize when it is the season for you to sow. The seed you sow right now, it's not going to leave your life, but it goes into your future and it multiplies. And I thank God that I've seen him work. I've seen him work. How many people have seen him work? Yes, Lord. And it never stops because God does things in abundance. He does things to overflow. We serve a big God. And he has big things. He has and makes big ways. We don't serve a small God. So that's why I give big, give big. And I admonish you that this is good ground. This is certainly good ground. This is obedient ground. I'll tell you that much. If you want to link up with somebody who's in a phase of obedience, link up with me. <laughs> because I'm learning how to say yes to God and not take, a, not take it back. Um, and so we want you to give. If you have checks or cash, you can certainly use the baskets that we have here. But for those of you who want to sow via cash app, you can do so by using dollar sign T Harrison Ministries. Dollar sign T Harrison. That's H A I R S T O N Ministry. So funny. Me and my husband have to spell our name every time because somebody always spells it Harrison. And I don't want you to do that because, you know, there's some uh, people out there on Cash App that are not honest. And once they see somebody's uh, face on YouTube and on Instagram one good time, they go and make a Cash App with a similar name. 
and it's happened to me, so I want you to make sure that you're sowing your seed to the right place. That's T. Hairston Ministries, or you can zell T. Hairston Ministries at gmail.com. And when you have your seed, you can stand. If you're given by Cash App or something, when we do this and after we pray over it, if you want to come tap the basket, I believe in doing things by faith. And I believe that there's an anointing here on the altar. And so when you, when it's time to give, if you want to come tap that basket, I admonish you to do so. I admonish you to do so. But stand up on your feet, everyone, whether you have a gift or not. I want you to stand up on, the, on your feet. I want you to be under the anointing of prayer at all times. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for every seed and every sower, every obedient heart, oh God, that knows that, Lord, that you are pouring out blessings. And there's a blessing in giving, God. We thank you for pricking their heart and for giving them everything they need in return. I thank you for opening up doors for them, for making ways for them. God, somebody has decided to give their last. And I thank you that by the time they leave this place tonight, that you will return it to them a hundredfold. I thank you, Lord, that they will not go lacking from anything that they gave during this week, but God, that they will begin to see multiplication after multiplication. I thank you for the effects of ancient oil lasting all year long into next year. I thank you for for bountiful blessings. I thank you, Lord, that our blessings are reverberating from year to year to year, that the seed we sow today has an assignment, a 10-year, 20-year assignment on it. I thank you for those who are giving out of the abundance of their heart, knowing, God, that you shall supply all of their needs according to your riches in glory. I thank you for looking on your people, oh God, and meeting every need tonight, God, every need in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We'll always give your name the praise and the glory and when we get our return God will still say that you did it it's because of you yeah thank you Lord it's because of you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor and all we're going to do is say thank you and we thank you in advance for what you're doing in Jesus name amen and amen if you would please be so kind to come and bring your gifts like I said if you gave by Chap or Zell, and you want to tap the basket, that is a sign that you are obeying God tonight. And so you can do so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. While the gifts are coming, let me remind you of what's happening on tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're starting off very early again, 9 a.m. I'm going to try to get you out as much as early as I possibly can tonight so we can be here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We have Apostle Gail McKinney who is coming. And, and, and she goes into warfare. And I want you to be here um, so we can break some stuff off of your life. Amen. And then tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, um, we have the prophetess Sade Martin. She is another powerhouse. You absolutely want to be here for that. And then Friday night, Prophet Todd Hall will be here. And I thank you. I want you to get here early for all of these sessions. Make sure you grab your front row seat. Make sure you come in with a praise. Somebody told me today that this is a conference crowd. And they said a conference crowd is different from a church crowd. But how many believers do I have? That's what's most important. If I have believers, I don't care where we go. We could go out on the street and make a church. We don't need a building to dictate what it is. And so the prophet said something uh, night before last, and I want to repeat that because I don't want you to interview who is up here. Just trust and know that they have a word. Don't size them up by what they look like, what they sound like, or what their credentials are. They've got history with God. Otherwise, they would not be in this pulpit. They have the ancient oil. And so if you trust me and you trust God, he set you here in the right place. So open up your hearts and your mind to receive what thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, the gift that I'm getting ready to bring before you first is a dear, dear, dear friend and sister of mine. And I hope she has time to give her testimony because God has blessed her. She has seen miracles. I'm a show yanda. Yenda my soul. She's seen miracles. And we've witnessed miracles in her life. And I believe the anointing is on her. I believe that mental, when every time she opens up her mouth, I believe that heaven hears and just pours down. And I've had the opportunity to know and serve in ministry with her in youthful praise for a very long time. And the ministry gift of Melissa Bethia is coming before us 
And then right after she finishes, oh, we are in for a treat. How many Jesus girls do we have in here? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She comes with an entourage, and I thank God for it. She's known all around the world, and she is going to deliver the word of God. And I'm so humbled that she would come here upon my request. I'm humbled. I am humbled. She could be anywhere in the world that she wants to be, but I'm humbled that she would come here. So the ministry gift of evangelist, prophetess, apostle, uh, Medina Pullins is coming right after Melissa. Will you stand on your feet and receive these ministry gifts? Thank you, Lord. Capable hands of Melissa Bethea. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Oh, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Oh. Praise him on the string instrument and the organ. Praise him on the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him on the high sounding cymbals. Oh. Let everything burn up shot. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, open up your mouth and bless him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Sound the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It's a way you gotta come before him. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. It's just a little scripture shower, y'all. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, be majesty, dominion, be majesty, dominion, be majesty, dominion, Open up your mouth all over this room and give God the praise. When you start declaring the word in the atmosphere, things got to shift. Things got to change. Pastor Trina, Pastor JJ, I honor you. Thank you. Pastor Medina, I honor her. I honor all of you. I'm blessed to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Woo. And it's so interesting that Pastor Trina's talked about, you know, my testimony a little bit. I, I probably won't be able to go into all of it, but just know that God is a miracle worker. And if you find yourself infertile, you find yourself barren, I'm a witness that according to the time of life, you will have your promised seed. And sometimes you gotta go through to get a little something extra from God because what I did not know was that my go through would birth a ministry that would help other women conceive. And as a matter of fact, there's a couple here tonight that the Lord used me to pray for and now they have two babies. So I'm here to let you know that God can. And if I'm talking to you, lift your hand. Don't be shamed. I speak to your womb right now. Ah, glory. And I 
call it to open up. I speak to your fallopian tubes. I speak to your uterus. I speak to the lining in your uterus. I come against the scarring that's causing you to not be able to conceive. I come against endometriosis. I come against PCOS. And your womb is open. And the seed will be planted. And you're gonna have a healthy pregnancy. You're gonna have a joyful nine months. You won't be on bed rest. And you're gonna be blessed and have a healthy child. And so shall it be. DM me when it happens. Hallelujah. All right, let's sing. Everybody clap your hands in the room. Here we go. So tonight we're going to offer up thanksgiving to God in a major way. Are you ready? Shout yeah. Are you ready? Shout yeah. Come on, clap your hands all over the room. All right, everybody, when I think right here. Think of all you done. And all the ways you made.
Say it one more time. We... Spoke those words, let there be light, and there was. And in that same breath, the stars fell in line with one voice, creation cries. You do all things well. Oh! Okay, yes. You do all things well. So be. Sing y'all. Be praised. Yeah. Be praised. Everybody say forever. One voice. Forever. And One more time. Everybody say be praised.
say be praised. I'm standing up here as one, but I got a P7. That's my husband and my five children. Be praised. Huh? That their lips would open up and bless the Lord. Cry out his praises. I have a granddaughter, and when I'm saying be praised, I'm saying hallelujah that my children and my children's children be praised. I want them to say, oh, yeah, that's Medina's granddaughters. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that praise over there. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 that praise, that praise is ancient. It's ancient. <laughs> it's ancient. It just didn't start with a granddaughter or a great, great, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't know how powerful your praise is. You don't know how powerful your devotion to God is. You don't even realize that you are a stronghold. See, when we hear stronghold, we think about something evil. Right here. Yeah. Destroy every stronghold. But how do you know that there's some, come on here, there's some good strongholds. The reason why the enemy can't wreak havoc in your family. The reason why he can't take the territory is because somebody already marked it for God. Somebody already declared a bloodline. Somebody already, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody already established. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All right, I'm going to calm down. Because I can already tell when I come into a place that has already been plowed through in prayer. So this conference, this meeting, this gathering, this assembling, Hallelujah. This divine appointment has already been set, really settled in heaven. And so we are participating in something that already happened. I don't want to come up with something new. I want to tap into what's already done. Because when we start trying to create stuff that he's no part of and he doesn't have anything to do with, it's just a waste of energy and a waste of time. But when we can tap into the mind of God and stand on the earth as it is in heaven, hallelujah, then the plan of God prevails. 
I want to thank God before you take your seats. I want to thank God, amen, for the pastor. I want to thank God for Pastor Harrison. Let me tell you something, J.J. Harrison, let me tell you something. This man of God came to my Jesus Girl Summit. So thankful he said yes, right? And when I tell you, he didn't just sing. Because some singers sing, but they don't have no oil. It's almost like give me a raspy singer off key with the oil. I promise you it's so much better. I'd rather take somebody with the oil that's less talented than somebody very talented, full of pride, and just singing all the right keys and all the right rips and all of whatever you call it. But when I tell you that man of God ministered, I said, Lord, is the roof going to come off of this place? The anointing was so strong in the, in the atmosphere, the shift that took place as a result of a price that was paid of a life laid out before God. I want to thank God for the man of God. Come on. Oh, you better thank God for him. Because guess what? We wouldn't be here celebrating with who I'm getting ready to celebrate, right? Because guess what? He, his, his vision is big enough to facilitate what God has put in our host. And now I want you to make some noise. And I want you to celebrate this queen. Come on, let's thank God for Pastor Trina Harrison. Come on. We've been admiring her from afar. Loved her already. Didn't have to meet her in person and hug her to already. You ever just met some people for the first time in person, but you already loved them from afar? And I tell you, I could already tell, mm -hmm, that's the same tribe right there. It's just certain things that, um, certain words, your speech betrays you. So when you start saying things like ancient and uh huh. It tells us, it says, you know what? Wait a minute. This is somebody that recognizes that no mantle ever leaves the earth. And they understand that though our methods may be different in communicating certain things, the message is the same. The foundation is the same. The word is the same. Come on here. The principles are the same. And one thing I love about this woman is she's a woman of prayer, which means that she's a woman of power. Would you put your hands together for this woman of God who's standing in the middle of a yes? Come on. Pastor Lady Trina Harrison, come on. All senior pastors and first ladies that are here, if you're here tonight, just wave your hand. I want to honor you. I want you to listen. I see my sister Ann Green, Pastor Ann Green here. I love you. Yes, we don't have some times up in here. I don't think it's no accident being here tonight because I'm telling you, hallelujah. Y'all standing in something that I'm telling you that's already saturated, right? Hallelujah. But the plan of God. Look at what God is doing. My son is here, Pastor Mosley. I want you to thank God for him, Pastor. Good to see you tonight. Amen, amen, amen. The plumbers are here. I'm happy to see you. Thank you all for being here. I have so many. I don't want to you start naming names. You get in trouble. Uh, Lyndon and Patricia, would you thank God for my spiritual son and daughter? They're here tonight. Yes. Amen. She told me she had me some nice um, Indian dresses, right? Okay. All right. I'll take it. I'm happy about it. Uh, I, I, I see that uh, uh, Reddick is here tonight. Is it, this must be his home because he, he, he be cutting up. So y'all have all this going on on Sunday morning? Oh, Lord Jesus. I tell you, I'd have to slip up in here just for worship. What? And then Pastor, I, I want to thank God for Pastor, for, for the, our prophetic singer, Melissa. I've been knowing her for years. So we can have a whole party with her. And if I miss you, I didn't mean to miss you, but I'll find you somewhere in the message. I thank God. Kimberly, Kimberly, there go my baby. It's good to see you tonight. Amen. My assistant, Lisa Arnold. Lisa, wave your hand. Lisa is also, we share, we have something in common besides her being my assistant for years, y'all. Listen, okay? She all the way in the family. I mean, all the way. We have the same grandbaby. All right? Yes. Her name is Lauren Simone, and Simone is not Lisa's middle name. It's... <laughs> but here's the advantage she has is my son and her daughter, so you can imagine, right? But so it's all in the family. I love her, and I appreciate her. You may take your seats and all the team that is here tonight. Let's go into the word of the Lord. We're just so thankful for all that God is doing, and we are in uh, some interesting times, right? And so it's pretty amazing, woman of God, that 
our host, right, that God has uh, called to put this meeting together in the gathering. I love that name. Oh. Y'all are cutting up. The name is prophetic in itself. I love, I love, it is so God, it is so on time, it is so the will of the Lord. And it's just wonderful when you cannot be so religious and stuffy and stuck in, in yesterday, right? Because could you imagine what would have happened with Abraham if he didn't have the rhema, if he didn't have, come on here, the, 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 not just what God said, but what is God saying? Yeah, what would he have done, right? <laughs> yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. And so we thank God for what the Lord is doing in the gathering place. It's so cool. I could just see, you know, it just, I just see a coffee shop. I just see, I just see, I, I'm telling you what I see in the spirit. It's, it's more than just church on Sunday morning, but I also see some laptop meetings. I see some workspace. I see some ownership of where place where people will come together. And it's almost like they're just coming to be creative. They're coming to work. It's like a lab or something like that. And it's the gathering place. And, and it's where creative minds will get together. And the Lord will download solutions and strategies. And, and he will cause you to be a cut above the rest. And so that name is, is beyond this spot. It's beyond this location. Can I tell you what the Lord has spoken to me? It's beyond this location. It's beyond, it's beyond this spot. It's beyond this building. But it's so expansive. It's somebody say beyond. Uh-huh. And so don't be surprised when you see the gathering place north and the gathering place south. And it's different locations. Yeah, I see it in the spirit. One thing I can do is I can see. Hallelujah. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Proverbs 22 and 28. Hallelujah. Yes, God. He's gotten you prepared and ready for this end time harvest. Proverbs 22 and 28. Do not move the ancient landmark that your fathers have set. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 19 and 14 real quick. You shall not move your neighbor's landmark, which the men of old have set in the inheritance that you will hold in the land that your God has given to you to possess. You may take your seat. I'm going to go through so many more scriptures. You'll be standing the whole service. And so I'm going to walk just a little bit and then we will just, you know, we'll go where we're going in the spirit. But I want to lay this foundation right. And so when you look here in this first particular scripture that we read in Proverbs 22 and 28 that talks about the ancient landmark, you'll see it throughout the scriptures. There will be times where the Lord would create boundaries. It's kind of like a, you know, a word now that people are throwing around, respect my boundaries, right? It's like you need to put some things into place. Even Jesus had boundaries, didn't he? He, he had some boundaries, woman of God. Yes, he did. He had boundaries in place. In other words, he had the time where the multitude would be with him, right? And they all could be there. He had times where the multitude couldn't go with the 70. Only the 70 can fit in here. He had time, boundaries, another boundary, right? He had another boundary where the 70 could not go with a 12 went, right? Then he had another another boundary where the 12 couldn't go where the three went then he had another boundary the three couldn't go where he was with God the father alone some of you are feeling schizophrenic because you have no boundaries you have no boundaries you have no boundaries as to when you take calls and when you don't no boundaries as to when come on here when you're available and when you're not no boundaries as to when is your prayer time your bible study time your devotional time come on your time of fasting it used to be when you're talking about going back and dealing with the ancient right used to be a time when we were coming up it wasn't a thing you listen you didn't even think about not fasting going throughout a week and you didn't have at least a one day fast Somebody said, that sounds ancient, right? All right, so let's walk it out here. But guess what? If we put that ancient practice into place, you wouldn't be a slave to your phone. If that ancient practice was put into place, huh? You, come on here. You wouldn't be double-minded. You wouldn't be. Some people can't even sit down and have dinner with their family without checking their phone because there's been nothing put in place as a standard to say, wait a minute, everything else has got to bow to this. So there are certain things that seem ancient, but they actually keep you from being enslaved. And if we continue to practice the ancient things, we will find ourselves in total freedom when the world is walking mindlessly with the mindless media, taking in the words, taking in the communication, taking in the messaging without even thinking and going along with the crowd. God never called us to go along with the crowd. 
He called us, come on here, to understand the cloud. He called us to understand his presence. And so these things that, you know, we just want somebody to call us out, tell us my name, my name Jackie, tell me my social security, you know, social security is number 10. We can do all of that. And yes, you can get a miracle, right? But do you want to live from miracle to miracle or do you want to live the blessing? God doesn't want us to wait until we get to heaven to have peace. To have joy, right? So in order to function with peace, true peace, true joy, it doesn't mean the absence of problems and situations, but it does mean the presence and the practice of the principles. The principles are timeless. They are ageless. Come on here. They work in every generation. They work for our great-great-grandmother, and they work will work for our great-great-grandchildren. But we cannot give up that which is substantial, for that's that sizzles. You know, I love, I, I, I love just redecorating something. Like, I, got, I have this new vase in my kitchen, and it's the simple things that just make me smile, right? And so it's a beautiful vase, and it's square, and you can put the flowers in it, and it's so pretty. But if I focus more on that beautiful vase rather than a foundation in that house, which can go first, the vase or the, or the foundation? We've got to make sure that we don't give up the treasures for the trinkets. We're going to make sure that we do not give up that which is substantial, that which is relevant, that which is significant, that which is important for that that is temporary and will not last throughout the test of time. You are here tonight because you've been through some stuff. Somebody say, I've been TNT. I've been tried and tested. Okay, come on, let's talk about it. And so then when I look at the scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, Verses 6 through 10 in the Message Bible. Here it is. It says, we, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground. I'm reading from the Message Bible. We, of course, have plenty of what? How much wisdom? Plenty of wisdom to pass on to you. It's yours. It's for you. But there's a protocol. Ooh. There's a principle. Uh huh. There's a formula. Once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground, why is it important to get on firm, firm spiritual ground? It's important because it's a waste of time to give it to you if you're not on that ground. So God is saying, I won't waste the wisdom. Paul is saying, I won't waste the wisdom. It's a waste of time. You're not ready for it yet. But when you're on a firm ground, in other words, when you have matured from just a shout and a dance. Uh oh, and I like to shout. So I ain't getting on the shout. We're going to shout tonight. But if all I am is a shout and a dance without principle, my ground is shaky. Huh? And so that's why you got folks shouting and dancing and praying with crystals and sage and, and all kind of foolishness, right? Because the ground is not right. Once you get your feet, I don't care how many people blow on you, huh? You run around seven times, you got to surrender and say, I'm all in for God, not all in. I ain't talking about a faulty conversion because we got false conversions going on. You know what a false conversion is? Come on. Before we can go and get back to the ancient oil, we got to make sure we believe the same thing. Somebody say the oil is flowing. No, it's not. If the protocols that attract the oil is not in place, if it is not already settled in heaven for that oil to flow on that particular thing or that particular person, it is not going to flow out of alignment. Uh-oh. Oh, you think? And so now we got to revisit. We just did a, uh, we had our holy convocation. Uh, my husband and I, and I thank God for my husband. He's the love of my life. Nearly almost 30 years together. It's a, I think it's 28, 28, 28, y'all. 28 years together. Don't tell him I did that. But I'm telling you, we were discussing how now we have to reevaluate and ask questions to find out. 
whether you actually really believe the same things that we used to before we slap a collar on you and a license. Do you believe that Jesus is the only way whereby men can be saved? Do you believe, hallelujah, before you get, come on, this elevation to become an elder, to not just preach, but you can do marriages. Do you believe that marriage is between a man and a woman? Do you still believe that? No, we ain't going to buck over that. We ain't going to shout over that. What do you believe? Where do you stand? Well, I just feel your feelings don't count. Sometimes I feel like knocking somebody head off. Sometimes I feel like telling somebody off. Sometimes I feel like drop kicking somebody. Sometimes I feel like just doing whatever my flesh want to do. But my flesh got to come under. It's got to die. Sometimes you don't feel like you think I always felt like taking care of the kids, five kids. Ma, 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 ma. Yes. Hi. It's not a feeling. You don't feel like going to work, but you get up and go. That's why for all these people walking around talking about, oh, I ain't going to that church. You know, church hurt, church hurt, church hurt. I'm hurt you feel that way. Yes, there's some people that are bad, but there's some bad cops, bad doctors. Come on here. There's some people going in basements and getting injections in their backside and all kind of crazy stuff all on the inside of them. Going to the hospital, dropping dead, right? It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean come on here, that that's right. No, but find you the right place. Some of y'all need to testify because I know how I was when I came into church. I was messed up. Come on here. I was confused. I was lost. But something about that word cleaned me up. Come on here. Something about that word. Come on. It, listen, it dissolved relationships that I had no business being in. Something about that word. Come on here. Purified my life. That word worked on me until I became something that I wasn't in the natural. Come Every pastor that ain't doing all that kind of stuff. Come on here. Some of y'all need to come on. Go ahead and feature. It's just that the wrong is loud. Y'all know. Y'all be seeing people wrong. There's two left shoes on social media. But you know you don't want to get involved with all that kind of stuff. And all the off people loud and just saying all kind of stuff in the comments. That's because they off and wrong. But most people don't. Listen, you say if I can't help it, I ain't going to mess it up, doc. Isn't that right? And so God is telling us, we got to do like Paul told us. He said, listen, I don't lay the foundation in you. And be careful how somebody comes and tries to build. See, some of y'all be letting anybody speak to you all. Anybody speak to you. And then, you, I, all they got to do is put on an outfit and look like somebody called them. You don't know where they came from. Where's their spiritual lineage? Where did they faithfully serve? Come on. What kind of life they're living? Come on. Come on. Come on. I tell some people all the time. I say, listen, I say, my husband is the greatest man I know living. They say, how could you say? I know there's some preachers that may be more famous, but I live with him. Some of y'all be going cocoa for cuckoo puffs over folks y'all don't even know. You don't know what's going on in the back room. You don't know who they messing with, who they sleeping with, who they screwing with, all the mess of that kind of stuff, what voodoo, witchcraft they into. And then you dishonor people that you know that's serving the Lord. That's right among you. The devil is a liar. You got somebody, you got good leadership. You got people praying for you. Come on here, that's really serving the Lord, really doing this for the right reasons. Come on, really serving God. You ought to honor them. Don't stop being so quick, come on, to come on out in front of everybody else and, and want to bring a platter when you come to church and get home with your husband and be like, buddy, you better get that paper plate. We got it twisted. Say ancient oil, right? The ancient oil is going to be connected 
to some ancient patterns. Check this out. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground. Not natural ground. Spiritual ground. Uh-oh. Build your spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up in the spirit. That's when the superman comes out. That's when the superwoman comes out. All of creation is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God, not the sons of your mama and your daddy. They ain't waiting on that. Come on, I thank God for my father today. I thank God. Hallelujah. But a lot of years, I didn't even see him around. He was in the street on drugs. Huh? They ain't waiting for the, 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 that daughter. They're waiting on the born again. Uh-oh. The born again, the new creation. Oh, Reba, Sataya. Huh? You must be born again. And this is why we have to be careful now. Because, come on, if we want the ancient oil, then guess what? Come on. The way we enter in has got to be right. It, it can't be a faulty. There's faulty conversions that are happening, right? And what these faulty conversions are is you think because you joined the church, you got born again. You became, oh, I, glory to God, I became a member. But did you begin... Have you joined into the family of God? Have you joined in with the first begotten? Are you born again? Are you a new creation? Did you pray and give yourself to the Lord? Did you confess Jesus? Oh, y'all quiet up in here. When you're more proud to say that your church is such and such, then you are saying, I'm born again. Oh, Lord. Woo! Something is wrong. But is there somebody here that feel ancient, right? And said, I'm saved sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire. There's a church. There's a church. Got them in your belly, in your soul. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you try to quit, you can't quit because he keeps on keeping you alive. He keeps on keeping you moving. Oh, my God. This is important because when trials come, the trials are going to reveal what we made of. Pastor Trina is going to tell whether we really believe what we say we believe. It's going to tell whether we're standing on Christ, the solid rock. It's going to tell where our trust is. Is it in chariots? Is it in horses? Is it in social media? Entertainment, fame, money. Oh, the test is going to reveal that. Many of you have passed the test. You had a Job experience. And the devil found out, hallelujah, you were more than cosmetics. You had character. Oh, my God. Once you get on firm spiritual ground, but it's not popular wisdom. What? The wisdom, how to, what to, when to. How, what, when. Because you can know the how and the what, but do it in the wrong time, wrong result. Huh? You can know how to drive through that light, right? But if you don't know when... And you go to driving through the red light, you can cause a what? Accident. Okay, okay, okay. But the problem is, some would say, the wisdom is not popular. Are you willing for the ancient oil to be called the unpopulars? Are you willing to be booed. I remember when I first started preaching, y'all, I was so excited because Jesus came into my heart. This girl, born and raised in the boogie down Bronx, the Lord transformed my life, transformed my mind, gave me peace. I thought I was like Mary Poppins walking down the street to the bodega because peace that I never had, I now had it and I wanted to tell 
everybody. Boy, I can remember getting on the train. And in between train stops, I would get up and start preaching John 3, 16. Yeah. And I get up and I start preaching about how God loves them and how he wants to save them and give them the offer for salvation. Pray the prayer of salvation. Well, sometimes I would get cussed out. Now, normally, if I was in my flesh and with a carnal mind, at that point, they cuss me out. I cuss them back out and maybe whip their tail. But because a new creation had taken place, and I'm excited about sharing about this Jesus. Oh, my God. I know we want a lot of prophets in the church, but can we ask God for some evangelists? We pray for some more evangelists that will go out. Oh, y'all quiet up in here. I want to prophesy. Can we pray for some prophesying evangelists that would run and tell that, tell the story, tell of the death, the burial, and the resurrection? And all y'all in the other positions ought to go ahead and pray till you will have a job. Uh-oh. What the apostle going to do if the evangelists don't go? Who the pastor going to preach to if the evangelists don't go? Come on. Who the teachers going to teach if the evangelists? Oh, y'all quiet up in here. Y'all think they coming from magic. No, they ain't coming from magic. Somebody got to open up their mouth and somebody got to go. Somebody got to go to the street corners. Somebody got to be digital evangelists. Somebody got to come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's time to take the territory. Lord, raise up evangelists. You want to have no room up in the church? Let some more evangelists rise up. Because the last place they trying to run is to get the mic. They want to hit the corner. They want to hit the clubs. Oh, come on, come on. They want to hit the streets. They want to reach the lost. You're getting ready to see a mighty arising, a powerful evangelist that are going to turn cities upside down. They are going to turn secular arenas into sacred places. God has given them strategy. He that, come on, wins so Oh, come on. If you're going to win souls, you got to be what? Wise. And God has given them wisdom in the approach, wisdom in the witness. The ancient oil. The ancient oil is not just coming for us to get some more money. The ancient oil is for us to be effective witnesses. Woo! Why do you call a witness? You call a witness to testify. You call a witness as proof. Some of you, the hell that you just went through was your witness, your proof to stand up in a place and say, look what God still can do. You didn't even realize, come on here, your affliction, hallelujah, was a setup for promotion for you to stand in a high place and witness of the goodness of God, the deliverance of God, the supernatural power. God brought you here to the gathering place to speak to us. I honor all the speakers that were here. I'm glad to do my part. Each and every one is meant to be here. And I'm glad to be a part of this dream team. But this was not about you just coming and having church. 
This was not just about another service. This is a woman of prayer who heard from God and say, I mark these dates and I want you to bring them to the gathering place and I want you to call it ancient oil. Hallelujah. And I want to speak to my people because the Lord wants you to know he don't want you having to be intimidated by anything. Remember who you are. Remember, remember, remember. See, what he's got me here doing is overthrowing, come on, idols and, and things that have gotten out of place, that have gotten your attention, things that we've been paying attention to that ain't even equal to you. Stuff that's beneath you. Come on. The devil ain't even equal with you. He's beneath you. Some of you been functioning as if he's eye to eye with you and he's not. He is beneath you. You have authority over him. You have authority over his imps. You have authority over principalities and demonic things. Come on here in demonic beings. You have authority over the enemy. He is not your equal but in order for you to understand that you got to put your head in the game you gotta come on you gotta wake up to this thing daily you gotta prioritize your day when you want the ancient oil when you want the oil that really works I ain't just talking about somebody giving you some oil that they blew on I ain't talking about somebody just giving you something that you gave a hundred dollars for I'm talking about the oil that comes when the midnight oil is burning I'm talking about the oil when you slip out of your bed three o'clock in the morning and you say here I am Lord I'm talking about the oil that flows uh, when you get up and you just start saying uh, Lord I love you Lord I adore you Lord I praise you I magnify you I love you always you're my forever love uh, you're my beginning you're my eternal you're my everything you're my all in all you're my dream you're my hope you're my foundation you're my best friend you're the best dad I ever had uh, oh I just love you Lord uh, I'm so glad to be called by your name I'm so glad to be known of you uh, I'm so glad to be one of yours the oil is flowing the oil flows when you're just adoring him and worshiping him and loving on him the oil flows when we love the healer more than the healing the oil flows when we love the provider more than the provision ah yeah 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 Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The oil flows when we love the way maker more than the way that have been made. The oil flows when we love the door more than the one that opened the door. Come on. Ah, the oil flows when we love him more than we love stuff. The oil flows when we love him more than even the promises. The oil flows, hallelujah, when we love him more than even the benefits of being saved. Hallelujah. Oh, to know him, to love him, to trust him, to learn of him, to dwell with him, to talk with him, walk with him, sit with him, shop with him, hang out with him, abide in him. Oh, oh, let's not talk about the oil that flows when we abide. But if the landmark has been moved, and that landmark has been set, in Satan's court, then the oil can't flow. There's been landmarks that weren't supposed to be moved. Landmarks that were supposed to remain, and they've been picked up and set in Satan's court and perverted, polluted, mixed with other gods. And see, here's the thing about God. Not only does he demand to be first, he refuses to be second. Uh-oh. What you mean? He refuses. You'll never see, I'll never see God's best by putting him second. He said, I'll have no other I'll have no other God before me. I won't have money before me. I won't have fame before me. I won't have Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok and social media. I won't have any of it. I won't have any leader before me. I won't have your favorite singer, your favorite preacher. I won't have yourself because a lot of you, your idols are not somebody else's yourself. You, God, all on the throne. 
of your own life. Whatever happened to I give myself away. I give myself away. So you. Woo. But if I don't give myself away, I'm not usable. Oh, now, man, they be see. It's when we abandon all. See, when God says all, he knows what that looks like. So landmarks have got to be put back and reset. That's why when Paul said, listen, you ought to be teaching now. But because you're not matured, I got to teach you all over again because the foundation is not right. But here's the good news. There's nothing wrong with going back and getting it right. It's better to get the foundation right than to go keep trying to build on something that is not stable. The fundamentals of faith. Huh. The stuff that sounds ancient. Oh, my God. Huh. See, I got plenty of wisdom. Everybody talking about AI. Huh? All the advancements and all the stuff that you can do technologically. And then they'll say, you know, well, you know, in a year or so or maybe before then, it's going to surpass human intelligence. Then somebody said, well, it doesn't, it's not really Somebody else came out with their report. Well, it's not really going to pass human intelligence, you know, because some things it's not able to detect. I don't care whether it passes human intelligence or not. Because as long as it doesn't match God intelligence, I have dominion over it. Oh. Y'all too quiet up in here. AI don't have the Holy Ghost. What are you thinking? AI don't have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost knows what AI doesn't know. And AI, come on here. You listen to the Holy Spirit. It'll show you how to make AI your slave. Yes, he will. Why? So you will be God's minister. And while you out ministering and witnessing and praying for the sick, come on here. Feeding the community. Ching, 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 ching. Because you have automation set up. I know Sister Trina is like, I know Pastor Trina is like this. Anybody like this where, there's a lot of people up in here, y'all watching online. Listen, you ever been in your prayer closet, wherever your space is, ooh, yeah, my son, yeah. and got to leave, and ready to cry, because you got to go take care of business. I'm believing God with this advancement of technology that systems will be set up to work for me to bring increase automatically. So when I come out of my prayer room, after I go visit the future, because I don't know, listen, some folks be bored in prayer. I get excited because I go to Africa. I go to India. Come on here. I go into the future. Come on here. I access breakthroughs. I access deliverance. I access miracles for my family. Answered prayer. Are you kidding me? Pray is where it's at. So when I come out, when you come out, you just go, ooh, while you were praying. Pastor got an assignment. Pastor got an assignment to go somewhere, and you want to go, and God wants you to go, and he don't want you to be on payroll. And you say, God just wants me to assist you, Pastor Trina, to go and to serve. No, you don't have to pay me. I'm, I'm wealthy. Let's go do it. Let's go get the ladies. Let's go meet them at the shelter. Let's go build that community. Let's go set up that affordable housing. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's set that up. How is that going to happen? Because somebody heard from God and got the wisdom on how to do it today. Because you can have the scripture from yesterday that is relevant today, but the wisdom tells you how to use it. How to apply it, hold up. Where to send it. How to work it. Oh, my God. Are you ready up in here? Tell him he's about to pass it on to you. Act like you're going to pass something down the aisle. He's going to pass it on to you. There's some wisdom coming to you. Huh? For next level living. Huh? 
for global expansion. Uh-huh. You're getting ready to break out on the left and on the right. It's going to happen just like that. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Hallelujah. You got to know there are protocols huh, that got to stay in place. Protocol is how you do a thing, right? Your protocol is the rules. It's the procedures. I don't know why y'all think there's protocols in the courthouse, protocols at the school. Everybody want to honor the protocol. And then when you institute that at church, right, to try to teach the people how to be disciplined, you want to buck up against it. But there is no glory without government. You can have a feeling, you can have a junk and a jive, but, but there is no glory without order, without structure. Come on here. God is looking for the house to be set in order. And some of this stuff, come on here, that is happening now today is God is leading leaders to get the house in spiritual formation. Yes, you're gifted, but you don't know where you fit. Yes, you're called, but you don't know where you're fit. Where's your assignment? Who are you called to? Nobody is called to everybody. Some to the Jews, some to the Gentiles. And that's why you need leadership, good leadership to help bring the house into spiritual formation so that you can understand your part. You know, oh, I'm not delayed. You fit best here. And the arm by itself is not going to do well. But if all the joints supplies one another and we connect together and get in formation, we can roll up. How many of you hear from the, from the army, from the military? When they go to get in formation, let somebody close and not be right. Let somebody show up drunk. You ain't lining up. But now you could have done been in the bed with Tootie, Cootie, and whoever else. You could have just finished smoking a blunt, just finished getting high online, finished cussing everybody out, and now you're leading us in worship. Uh-uh. Just because you moved the landmark doesn't mean that God did. Holiness is still right. This is why I love Pastor Trina. I would have came here whenever she said I was coming because I know that she understands that holiness is still right. The standard is the standard. You clubbing all night high, taking all kind of pills, and then want to prophesy. You moved the landmark, but God didn't. It's got to be put back for the oil to flow. The formation, the spiritual formation has got to be in order, right? From the head to the beard, down to the skirt tails of the garment, which means that there is alignment. And there's always a dark prophet to prophesy exactly what you want to hear. Itching ears. Tell you what you want to hear. They don't see your talent. They don't see how cold you are. So what if they don't see it? Does God see it? There's so many messages puffing up the flesh. Maybe it's a character test. To see when you don't get your way, how you respond. Well, I ain't telling you something that I don't know about. I'm telling you that if you abort the process, you abort the power, the real oil, the real power. And you are going to be tested for your motives. Is this your show or is this kingdom? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where, where we at? Can I tell you promotions that I see happening in my life is as a result of behind-the-scenes tests that were passed that if no, nobody else saw what my response was but God saw, and if I had not passed that test and I made decisions based on my personal ego and my agenda instead of choosing what was best for the body, I would have missed the promotion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody want to be Esther, but are you willing to die? 
Those are protocols. You want to be the leader. You're the first to sacrifice. What do you do when the church is built? The budget has not been met. What do you do? And the money's in your house. Okay. I ain't telling you what I don't know about. My husband and I had to sit there for, for some time, okay, for years. And then not get up on Sunday morning and bleed all over the people and say, oh, you know, we had to know. That ain't none of their business. But the people that handled the finances knew, here you go. Here you go. Oh, you thought it was your show. Huh? You want to be the leader. Are you ready to go in and say, if I perish, I perish? Huh? Because of people being saved, it's more important to me. Being in alignment with what God has already said. Of people being rescued is more important than me staying in the safety of this palace and my dresses and my service. If I perish, I perish and bust up in there. Oh, come on, come on, come on. See, you're here tonight and you are part of this meeting because you are one of the ones that God is using in these last days. And your motives is not selfish ambition, but it's a holy calling. And holy ambition. It's holy. Somebody say it's holy. It's holy. Set apart. Look at this. Everybody likes fashion. I like fashion. It's not the popular wisdom. The fashionable. Huh? Wisdom of high price experts. They charging you a lot of money to tell you what the Bible has already said. And then the crazy thing is they go and take it and make it as if they came up with a revelation or illumination and folks running to buy their books and the Bible said it first. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You need to know, come on here, that you come from the kingdom of God. You need to know that you are ambassadors, that you are salt and light. You are A-listers. You are set apart. It used to be an in thing to be sanctified, you know. Now folks don't want to say they sanctify. Oh, yeah, I'm glad to be sanctified. What does that mean? I'm set apart. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm like the fine china, baby. <laughs> you don't just put me out there with the trash. I'm special. I'm different. I can't get involved with every conversation. I can't eat at every table. I can't participate in every act. I can't be a part of demonic rituals from darkness. No, no, no. I'm sanctified. I'm already spoken for. Uh-huh. I've been called, hallelujah, by my name. Yes, uh -huh. He knows my name. He knows the hair on my head. He knows when I comb my hair, the hairs that come out in the brush. He knows me so well that he knows exactly what number it is. Even when I put the clips in. Come on. Y'all got to know we are special people. We've been set apart by God for a particular use, for a particular purpose. And that purpose is to bring God glory. The Lord sent me here tonight because he said, I'm passing wisdom to you. Wisdom for the end times. You're going to know what to do, when to do, and how to do because the Holy Ghost is your guide. The Lord says, remember the ancient landmarks. Remember the landmark of prayer. Remember the landmark, hallelujah, of worship. Remember the landmark of study of the word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs of not to be ashamed remember hallelujah the landmark of holy assembly forget not come on here the assembly or forsake not the assembly of yourselves together for such is the matter of some some people are doing it but don't you be like that hallelujah even as you see the evil day approach and be intentional hallelujah in gathering in assembly and connecting together because that's the gathering place where I'm going to speak to you hallelujah Hallelujah. I didn't just call you to come here for me to just speak to you, but I called you here to build you up, to send you out so that you would infiltrate territories, that you would be a spiritual wrecking ball to wicked systems and demonic systems and structures and legislation. And I will send you in and they will not realize how powerful you are until it's too late. I will send you into sectors. I'll send you 
you into all of the world. I'll send you into secular arenas for my glory. And you will go in and get evil legislation change. Legislation that promotes darkness. Hallelujah. If you want to know what the government is funding, follow the legislation. Anything that they recently passed. Anything that their agenda is speaking about. If you want to know where the dollars is going, it's what they put in legislation. And so right now, legislation is huge on immigrants coming in. They throwing out all kind of money. I'm not speaking against anything. I'm just showing you something here. And so therefore, they're going to take tons of money and throw it behind, putting them in nice hotels, putting it in places that will drive them, people that will serve as food. Well, see, the Lord is saying to you, listen, open your eyes in the spirit. I am giving you patterns and I am giving you protocols and I'm giving you wisdom and I'm showing you how to scale the city and take it. My people will not be behind but ahead right on time for a divine move. See, some of you don't even realize you were moving all along. Thou, O oh Lord, has caused men to ride over my head. Isaiah 66. Oh, come on here. But you have brought me out into a wealthy place. It didn't look like you were moving to where you were moving. But according to God's plan, according to God's pattern, according to God's blueprint for your life, the ancient plans that were set before you ever opened your eyes, before your mama and daddy ever got together, those plans were already in place. What do you mean? I'm telling you the path is already set. The path is already selected. The path is already called out. Oh, what? You are called to a finished work. God is a bad somebody. He finishes it. Before he ever started you, before your mom and daddy got together, he already laid out the blueprint for your life. Psalms 139 tells us before ever you come out here, live one day. God already had a book written about you. You better get ready. Somebody said a path is already set. I'm not trying to get what is not already set, but as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. God is saying to you, I'm giving you God's wisdom. Hallelujah. He said the fashionable wisdom of high price experts, it'll be out of date in a year ago. In other words, it's a fad. It's here now. And then next year is like, what you doing? That's played out. But God said the wisdom I have for you, hallelujah, is God's wisdom. It is something that is mysterious that goes deep into the interior of the purposes of God. God brought you here to the gathering place for the ancient oil to tap into the interior purposes of God. It is the spirit that takes you into the interior purposes that prays the perfect plan of God. Don't waste your time with all these head prayers going nowhere, but there's a better conversation that God wants to have with you. You can sit there and talk about who don't like you, who talking about you, where my haters at, or you can tap into by the spirit, the interior purposes of God in other words the blueprint that has already been laid out concerning your assignment concerning the mission concerning the mandate concerning the call concerning the impact when you dive into the interior purposes of God you do that through prayer that's an ancient landmark but you have to also be careful because there's a lot of witchcraft happening in prayer and if you don't know the promises if you don't know the promises you can get screwed up in prayer because you are praying amiss praying the false gods praying out of alignment God is not going to sanction what he has not already settled forever oh Lord your word is settled in heaven when you pray 
in the will of God, you are tapping into what has already been settled, what has already been secured. That's why when I was living in Bronx River and I was going to the neighbor's building where my mother was at and I walked over down the hill getting ready to go to the next building, there was a man that tapped me and asked me a strange question about the community center in the middle. I said, I don't know. I was a little girl, but because my mother was in 1435, I lived in building 1455. She was on the third floor, and because I was young, I didn't need an elevator. Well, I went to go up the steps to go to the third floor. That same man grabbed my jacket, but I got away because it was written long before I was on the scene that no matter how many got killed in my hood, no matter how many got destroyed in my projects, no matter how many murderers, how many rapists, I would have to make it through it because there's a book that had already written me on the other side. I existed in a place beyond my childhood struggle. You gotta know you didn't just make it out of that car accident. You didn't just make it out of that hospital. The book that was written about you had already set you and settled you in the future. I remember when in 2011, my husband had that hemorrhagic stroke, but before he did, he was preaching about Paul having to stand before Caesar. And he said that it didn't matter whether the ship wrecked, Paul couldn't die because he had a word that positioned him on the other side. See, you don't have to trip over a temporary fix. That thing is already settled. It is already finished on the other side. You exist, but your problem does not. Well, hello, children of Israel. Tell us about it. What do you mean? God had a script that set them on the other side of the Red Sea. They had a word that positioned them. They had a promise. You better learn how to pray the promises. Don't pray your favorite quote. Don't pray your favorite this. And according to the flesh, but I promise you, if you learn, I don't care if you got to write them down to pray the promises, you will build your spirit man. As a matter of fact, what will happen is faith comes by hearing. So open up your mouth and hearing by the word of God. When you pray the promises, there's a protocol being given out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So all of a sudden, when you pray in the promises, those promises are coming out of your heart. Oh my God, watch out now. You're more than charisma. Watch out now. You are a pattern and a protocol. Lord, have mercy. A living epistle where younger babies can look at your life and see the pattern, see the protocol. Well, Daniel, we see a pattern and we see a protocol. We see the principles forever intact. When the decree was made, you shall not pray to no other God. The Bible says that Daniel opened wide the window and prayed as he had been doing before. Three times a day, he never moved from the pattern. He never moved from the protocol. 
He never moved from the principle. He never moved from prayer. He never moved from the promises. Oh, somebody ought to say, I shall not be moved. See, the landmark today is not a physical building, but it is you. The body of Christ is his church. You got to make sure that the foundation, the ancient landmarks are intact. It didn't matter that my husband didn't remember who I was, who the kids were. He didn't remember that he was a preacher. He didn't know that I was a black woman. He didn't remember that I was his wife. But it didn't matter. I would have nearly lost my mind. But one more P. We talked about prayer. We talked about the promises. We talked about the protocol. We talked about the principles. But let me tell you about praise. Praise will cause you to see correctly when you praise. Your praise is transcendent. It goes beyond any problem. It's above any situation. And so while my husband was looking at me, looking me in the eyes, and the same eyes that said I love you was now looking at me like I don't even know you, but I was all right, actually better than all right, because of the protocol, the principle, that in the spirit I already had everything that I needed healing according to the promise by his stripes the stripes of Jesus we were healed so where is my healing where's my husband's healing in the spirit there's a protocol well I'm gonna go in the spirit and get the healing Get the intelligence, get the wisdom. Now the reason, this is why you gotta get, yes the healing was in the spirit, already done. But you need the wisdom of God. Cause sometimes like Esther, you already chosen to be queen, but you still gotta be a contestant. Some of you lose. The divine intelligence that you received in the spirit because you break protocol and consult with a lower rank, the flesh, to see if the intelligence of God is actually substantial. You ask the flesh, is that real? But the protocol is. You get the information from God and you tell the thing. You tell the sickness. You tell lack. You tell that child. You speak to that land. Oh, that's another protocol. You will have what you say. The power of life and death is in the tongue. You better open up your mouth. You better speak the word. You better say what God said to you. So now what do I do? I heard God say miracle. But I hear the doctor say he's getting worse. I still got to talk to them. You still got to go to the courthouse. You still got to have meetings. You still got to have negotiations. Your job is to not lose what God showed you, stand on earth in alignment as it is in heaven and say what heaven has said to the thing, to the court, to the money, to the land, to the people, to the person, to the marriage, to your children. To where you're going. So I walk in there, I'm about to close. I said, all right. I look at him. He think he West Indian. 
He's talking for three days straight like he's from there. I said, no, you're a black man from Jamaica, Queens. No, what you say? Me been as well as standing all my life. But it, none of that shook me because I was suited up. He didn't need his wife falling all on the ground and carrying on and throwing up and doing all of that. No, 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 no. I needed to be an ambassador and represent my kingdom and come in with kingdom orders. And I go talk to him and I say, hey, you getting better by the minute. You're going to be 10 times better. Oh, yeah, your numbers is doing great. That ain't what the doctor says. Your numbers is doing great. Yep, you getting better. And then I created boundaries. Anybody that I knew that could not take or handle seeing him cray cray out of his mind talking lunacy come on again looking bad looking like he about to go to the funeral home you were not coming in the room i love you but i got some boundaries i need a miracle i've been in this when god gives you a word when god shows you something come on again he has entrusted you with that vision he has entrusted you with that picture he has entrusted you with that word some of y'all lose what God had gave you because you told your friend that don't believe God for nothing. You keep sharing your dreams with baby killers. Dream killers. If they never believed God for nothing, why would you take what you believe in God for to them? Their whole spirit changed when you tell them. They was happy, excited, then you shared what you believe in God for, and all of a sudden the heaviness enter in. You need to repent and don't talk to them about it again. Same protocol. That was for my husband, but when you believe in God to build a city, you think everything's just gonna be yes, yes, yes? No! No! Some of y'all need to get over your childhood trauma. Shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself. This is free. You ain't even got to go to therapy. Shake yourself. Get all that childhood trauma off you. It's dropping off now in the name of Jesus. You afraid to move forward because you scared somebody going to tell you no. No. So what would God say yes? Kept getting worse. Long story short. The day I went in there was about the Maybe 18th day, something like that. Everything getting worse. He still don't remember. All that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think the devil said, I ain't going to do nothing else? Everything happened. People we had orders of protection from driving in front of our house. Daughter's hand got burned. Son suspended from school. Come on! You ain't the only one going through stuff. But I'm telling you, there's a way that you can have peace in the midst of it all. You ever had somebody want to protect you from something? And they say, don't tell her. And the devil always got somebody to bring you the news like good Job. Come on, you notice the messengers didn't get killed. The messengers made it to bring the bad news. Because the enemy want to break you. But God knows that he built you with the storm in mind. When he made you, he made you of the good stuff. You are weatherproof, season proof, storm proof. Come on here. It won't take you out because your substance is right. Your foundation is right. Your core is right. Your belief is right. Your trust is in the right place. That's why the storm couldn't wipe you out. You a storm chaser. Somebody ought to shout because you outlast the storm. You forgot to praise. You forgot to give God thanks. The storm is over. But guess who's still standing? Oh, you need to go ahead and praise him. Because that thing ain't even in your life anymore. You're not even in that situation anymore. Do I got somebody that'll take 30 seconds to go to praise in God? Because you outlast the storm. You had the real oil. You had the real word. You had the real promises of God. God said to me, I got to have the Holy Ghost. Have you received? Go ahead, girl. Since you believe, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's all right to run. Because if they knew, 
Your life would be a best time seller. Some of y'all come on here. That'd be a number one movie. That'd be a number one book. Oh, there's a song that came out of your stomach. You should have been out of your mind. You shouldn't even be able to spell your name. You should be walking backwards. But you are last your storm. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. That the voice didn't take you out. You outlast that storm. Yes, you did. That death didn't take you out. You're still here. You're still here. You outlast the storm. The storm came and gone. It came and left. It came and gone. Church 
will not be left behind. The church of the living God is taking over. When we leave up out of here, we will not be bankrupt. We won't be bankrupt spiritually, naturally, economically. Oh, this is the showdown. This is the final act of somebody on a praise God for the sweat. You got that ancient on you. See the protocol? One more thing and we gon' shout. So God gave me what to do in that. That testimony went around the world. Some of you done heard it a few times. All on national television, been all out of the country, Africa, different places. Of them just wanting to hear that testimony. Been in the places of kings and personal places that they live because they heard the testimony. Uh huh. So, not just in the house with people or the church with people, but in private quarters with just two people standing before kings to minister and share the protocol. The pattern, woman of God, I'm going to ask you to come right here. It's like the Lord has said, it's not that you are a scientist, but there's some formulas that the Lord has given to you for massive success supernatural advancement hallelujah and I see that the Lord has entrusted even these babes to you to train them properly to build them up and they will not be second class they will be a cut above the rest they'll be Daniels they'll be modern day Daniels they'll be modern day Deborahs they'll be modern day Esthers the Lord has called you and positioned you and in your prayer room, and in the spot, in the spirit, as you lay before the Lord, as you have prioritized the presence of God, God says, I have prioritized you on the front lines, and those that have not known of you are getting ready to seek for you, and request you, and sin for you, for you are a special agent of change. You understand hard matters. You understand mysteries you understand that that is not readily seen on the natural you have to have scope you have to have depth you have to have height you have to have divine intelligence woman of god the lord says i have made you one of my kingdom avengers you are a secret weapon oh in disguise you don't look like the power you carry you don't try to set yourself up. You don't try to promote yourself. You don't try to throw parties for yourself. But the Lord says that I have designed you for this particular time. You have come into your set time. This is your set time. You're a late bloomer, but you're blooming now. You getting ready to see life in bloom. Oh, somebody ought to help her praise God. There are so many connected to your spiritual womb. They will be strong. They will do exploits. They will take the territory. Oh my God. They will not compromise. They will be students of the word. They will be frivolous. They will have the oil overflowing in their lives. Somebody praise God for Pastor Tree. There are also businesses, entrepreneurial, ideas and concepts that the Lord has laid in you that is now time for it to come forth. God said, I already have the funding, the resources, the support. It's already successful. It's already written as a success. You're a thinker, you're a how-to girl, you're a why it works girl. God said, I wired you that way. 
I bless you with brilliance and I bless you with brains and I bless you with creative abilities. God said, I'm giving you patterns in the spirit. Things, oh, namasita that I say, you just gonna know how to put it together and it's gonna work the same way Chick fil A can take cows to sell chicken. Get ready, cause woman of God, it's not gonna make sense what God gives you, but it's gonna work. Somebody praise God, cause wealth and riches. Wealth and riches, spiritual and natural, in your house. Get ready. Keep a bag pack. Such a demand. Keep a bag pack. Because you got to go. You got to go to the Virgin Isles to Jamaica, to Trinidad, to Amsterdam. You got to go to Europe. Yes, you do. Oi, to Boston. Up north. Yes, you do. To Connecticut. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah. Glory. 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 The path is already set. The path is already set. The path is already set. Oh, and the great cloud of witnesses are saying, run. Train a runner, run! Train a runner, run! Train a runner, run! It's an advancement for the kingdom. Somebody praise God in this place. As much as she praised God for you, I want us to praise God for her. Physical. 
until he could. And my heart almost did like, but the Holy Spirit caught me and said, shout like it's him shouting. So my praise became prophetic. And I began to dance every time. I never told him that I saw him because I didn't want him to stop attempting. But every time I saw him try and couldn't, until he got a shout back. See, you go in the spirit and locate the victory. I dare you to pray.
is here. The fire of God is on himself. He just hit in the streets. So he took a bullhorn and went out to the club that he used to be in. Oh, y'all think God just gave you the gathering place for the speaking place that he would speak to us corporately. 
Yes, that is part of it. But you getting ready to infiltrate some ball stadiums, stadiums, baseball, basketball, football, the gathering place. Y'all getting ready to have maps on the wall. The gathering place where the harvest at. The gathering place. Special agents getting ready to go in with that ancient message, but a new method. My son went out there with a group and a bullhorn. Over 500 people became born again. One weekend. See, some of you don't realize the one that was cutting up the most was actually prophesying to you. I'm the one that the enemy is trying to abort the destiny of, but it will not be stopped. You ought to go ahead and praise God because the plan of God will not be stopped. Praise Him. Over 500. Born again. And now this church is going where they gather in the lunchroom, where they gather in government, where they gather in the school, where they gather for business, where they gather socially. It's on you. Now we're going to take the next 30 seconds. And while you're praising God, downloads are going to drop on you. The light just going to come on. Stuff you didn't even see. Angels are going to move on assignment and locate what belongs to you. Are you ready? One, two, one, two, three. Unto the nations, you're a creative prophet. Uh huh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and all your prophesying won't be just through your mouth, but through what you create, you will speak, you will declare what is to come. The glory of God, hey God, hallelujah. The enemy tried to fight you with anxiety and overwhelm you. Oh, but what tried to take you out? You are about to take it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just went to school to learn about what some people are going through. But now God has 
has empowered you and built you up to go in and not be impressed by what others are impressed by. You'll say, girl, forget all of that. That's not nothing. But you will teach the principles of God, the promises of God, the presence of God. They will desire God because of God they see on your life. Come on and bless the Lord. You are beautiful inside and out. Hallelujah. Some of you, this was your last stop before the big, for the biggest breakthrough you ever seen in your life. You can put it in your journal, put it in your smartphone. I'm telling you, some of you, you had to be here tonight before the biggest breakthrough you ever seen in your life outside of salvation. I'm talking about a phone call you never had. I'm talking about a setup you never seen. I'm talking about a breakthrough you never experienced. Oh, somebody ought to give God a praise. Praise Him like you believe it. give you a duel you are bigger than this property 16 deeds did we have the money for it when we first got did we have bidders outbidding us developers that wanted the property do you not know the property where we got the 16 deeds. There was no buildings over there. Huh? Do you not know that the developers had more money? They tried to squeeze us out because they were all friends. AI couldn't have given us the intelligence for that. Remember the protocol. Remember the principles. Remember the promises. Remember the pray them. Remember the praise in the spirit and they weren't responding to us but we were supposed to go to court egging us the Holy Spirit gave my husband exactly what email to send so everybody would see it and the number to put we won the bid and they said developers they said they got more money than you have I gotta say this to you cause there's major property Sitting, not outside of you, in you. Real estate, neighborhoods, shopping center. That's why I saw a little piece of it when I saw people working and sitting down, and it's like this futuristic thing, lab type thing, and but it's a part of a bigger picture. Uh, God's gonna 
the wisdom is being passed to you. You're it. They're gone. They've been called home. We are here. Catherine Kuhlman is not here. No mantle ever leaves the earth. Elijah is not here. David is not here. Abraham is not here. But the covenant. This land. The Lord gave my husband what to say. When they first they said to us, they said, we was all on a conference call. They said, their pockets are deeper than your pockets. The developers that already were making buildings. Building buildings. They've done it. Proven. They got all this money. My husband spoke from the spirit. He said, our pockets are deeper than their pockets. It goes through the earth up to the heavens. The divine supply. And I'm like, because mm -hmm. I knew what was naturally in the bank, but it wasn't according to what was in the bank. So what? When God says it's yours, it's yours. He won the bid by $500. let us overpay five hundred dollars huh? the property has gone up we've been there uh, three years now about four years five years over a million dollars each year it's gone up excess of a million maybe a million and a half but at least over a million and if we ever converted the usage, forget about it. You're moving from 10 million over to 40 million. Okay, okay. I'm saying that's in you. Huh? And one day that closing, will we dare to receive in the spirit what the Lord was saying? Will you think it began at in the prayer meeting? We got ready to pray, Pastor Queen. This is why it's so important that you keep having the prayers that God tells you to have. We were in prayer. I was getting ready to play the, pray the path and the plan that my husband and I talked about with the leaders. And I went to pray it, but you got to pray with the power. The Holy Spirit said, rip that up. Don't pray that. Because I was praying according to the location. But what if the pattern is bigger than what you've been praying? What if the blueprint doesn't fit where you currently live? So he said, throw it away. Don't pray none of that. I all organized for a shut-in. We was in a shut-in, and we're going to pray. Had to throw that away. He said, pray what I show you. I started praying in the banquet hall, the gym, the classrooms, the land. That surely was not going to fit on the square footage where we were. The, the, the land couldn't facilitate it. But in the spirit, the blueprint, the pattern was released where we were to see this is what I decided. Now, do you agree? For the year was out. That deal was presented to us, and we were in the building. I want to tell you, before the year is out. I want to tell you, before the year is out. I want to look at five people and say, before the year is out. You done closed on that deal. Before the year is out. Oh, before the year is out, some of you, before the summer is over, the largest contract you ever seen in your life, before the year, oh, yeah, yeah. some of you, before you get past three months, the largest contract you, come on, come on, God is big enough, come on, come on, come on, you don't got to go down for me to go up, we can go up together, Well, beside of five people and say, before the year, That's right, man of God in the blue. So if I would have stayed stuck in the flesh in prayer, having my plan, the protocol is to yield to the Holy Ghost. 
And he's saying to you tonight, the way he said to Abraham, get out of that tent. Get out of that tent. Because what I have for you is bigger than that location. It's bigger than that square footage. I need you to look up to the sky and see that what I have for you is far greater. The stars will prophesy to you. The sky is telling you. You can't even count. You can't even count. The measure, the magnitude, you can't even count. Get ready for a measure that you can't even count. You can't even count. The measure, the magnitude, you can't even count. In this place tonight, I gotta obey God. There's at least three people in here tonight that is going to sow a seed of twelve hundred dollars. Obey God. I sold in this house as God is my witness. A necklace, 11 carats and diamonds. I took off a diamond tennis bracelet, sold it. I was in this building preaching. The Holy Spirit said, sew it. I said, yes, Lord. I took it off and I sold it. Then the Holy Spirit said, the necklace you're wearing, the heart necklace, take it off of the thought. I said, oh, it wasn't because I was shouting. It was because it was my most expensive even more expensive than my wedding ring. It was 11 carats and diamonds. I said, oh! The Holy Spirit said, I said, sow it. And then I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I never want anything that you ever give me, please forgive me, to ever hinder me from obeying you. I had nothing. How could I act like I want to hold on to this? Took it off and sold it. Do you not know we, had, we did not have television cameras at that point at our church? But whoever was here had cameras. Do you not know the Lord used that message to go around the world? This is marking a spot. Your seed is securing a spot that you couldn't pay for. Some of you on a global scale. That I believe that's right now, that's why one of our necklaces we have it, it, it is not it, it is not inexpensive either. It's a sterling silver necklace. We take it on the road with us, different places we go to. I had one person just come and said, well, just give me, I think it was like almost 50 of them at one time. They're almost $300. Why? Because the seed, not only did it create a harvest internationally that opened up by the next week, but it also had other harvests that were attached to it. Your seed is securing a financial harvest, a promotion. I want you to get prepared in here. There's some of you in here that are going to sow a 120 seed. I want you to come to this altar. I'm not that you're given to be seen, but you're walking saying, God, I say, yeah. Now, if God's telling you to do the 12, don't come with the 120. Don't disobey God. We've done a disservice not training the younger generation to obey God. And we've done a lot of accommodating. And not teaching them how to trust God. I gave my way off the floor. I gave my way off of wearing my grandmother's clothes. Borrowed clothes. Sleeping at somebody's house on the floor. People stepping over me. And would give a seed from the floor. So don't give me man's wisdom that say you can't afford to give. No, I got a future. And God would challenge me. There were times woman of God with the glasses. He would challenge me to give my whole paycheck. And it looked like I couldn't afford to do it. But God knew that I existed beyond that place, that temporary spot. And if you got to ask money for permission, money is your God. But if you are master over money, then you do what God tells you to do. Thank you, Pastor. Who's coming tonight? Some of you, come on. Because you're going to shake the world like the people that were in the upper room. It didn't take thousands in there. It was 120. Come on. 
just like that. And I was in there saying stuff in, in here, in this building. Pastor Ann is here. There was another service that was here. They were using the facility. There's something about this ancient landmark. They were using the facility. I was preaching here for their conference, and I'm declaring and saying stuff like I was saying to you, but only saying it by way of the spirit because nothing in the natural said that that existed. Nothing in the natural said it was set up. But it was set up. It was settled in heaven. Settled in heaven. Houses you didn't build. Land you didn't toil. Hallelujah. God's going to show you how to use what's in your house. What's in your possession. Some more of you are coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. You're not given to be seen. But I'm telling you, I'm so glad I saw people give. Because I was born and raised, mom with six children on welfare. I needed to see givers. And you know what it did for me, pastor? It created and activated a desire to give. You know how I gave my first $100 seed? By cashing in coin. So I ain't training up minds to be just some, uh, just, you know, Starbucking and drinking uh, coffee. Get, you, get your tie. Train them up right. Train them up right. It worked for you. It's Bible. You're going to lend to nations. See that thing in the spirit. See yourself lending to countries. See, and come on, entire neighborhoods transform. Hallelujah. you to say it out of your mouth. Come on, say it out of your mouth. Come on. Hallelujah. You don't know lack. The more of you in here that need to sow some of you online. I only do all of this, but I ain't going to hell for nobody. If I told you the testimony, do you not know before my husband got sick? God knows, Pastor Trina, I had gotten up in church and said, we're going to have a service. My sister Lisa is here. We ain't going to do nothing but celebrate. We all going to wear white. This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me. My flesh didn't agree with one part of it. One, You know what the one part was? We was going to sow a special seed. And being that my pastoral heart kicked in. Right? That said, oh, this is not around the time for that. Graduations, weddings. Blah, 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 blah. The church saw me struggle. I said, Lord, can we do it later? Like October? He said, no. It has to be sooner rather than later. And I said, oh, Lord, see, I'm locating the blueprint by communicating in the spirit, not consulting the flesh. Lord, what's the date, Father? I said, oh, God, that's Father's Day. They're going to think I'm cruel, right? That's not a popular thing to do. But I said it because God said it. We're going to wear all white. We're going to sow our seeds. Those that could, we're going to bring a seed of $1,000. Yeah. Because we were going to sow into the kingdom. Of course, anybody that didn't have it, still come, bring your very best. But those that could, that were willing, we're doing it. Do you not know? What service you think was the first service he was able to come back to? So why do you think God said there was going to be no preaching? There was only going to be praising? And that we was all going to wear white and we were going to march in celebrating. You can't pretend being in your right mind. I couldn't bring my husband. I love my husband. It ain't been like no Tyler Perry movie where that man sitting there in a the wheelchair. And you know, he done been bad and it's like, let me give you some dog food. I have a good husband. So I'm going to protect him. There's no way I would have brought my husband around the members to be looking at him about, who are you? The first Sunday he was able to come back was... The day that God pre-planned. Congratulations. He pre-planned it. Congratulations. Congratulations. All the way to the top. Why? Because he pre-planned it for you. You hear that? Congratulations. Get ready to celebrate. 
Get ready to celebrate. Stay focused. Laser sharp focus. Don't be to the left or the right. Do what God told you to do. Congratulations. Because you're going to hit big. That was the service. That we shouted and danced. When my husband walked back up in there in that service, nobody could preach. You know what happened? The saints start falling to the floor, Pastor. Worshiping God already secure. Stop going around trying to appease the flesh and telling these young people, oh, you don't worry, don't worry about giving. Oh, you took that girl to the movies, didn't you? My youngest son, he would take his, girl, his girlfriend out. My husband and I would have to ask them where to go eat. And then look at the bill, $200. And then tell them to act like kids when it comes to giving. You want a kid harvest? Or you want God to do something for you spectacular in your 20, 19, 17? I would give so much. My grandma said, you ain't got enough. She just thought I was doing too much, but God was telling me to give. It looked like I was too poor to give, but it looked like the woman with the, come on here, who husband, listen, where did that woman buy herself with that baby about to die baking the property cake? Would that be popular today? Or would the bloggers get them? Okay, I'm not about to come out back to tell you that. And they paying for them patrons. Huh? Paying for gossip. Funding dark systems. If I do know somebody's well, I ain't participated in the demise of somebody. I don't know if they repented. I'm not God. I don't get to separate. Come on here. The wheat and the tears. I'm going to tear something up. I'm going to pull up a wheat. I want everybody in here. Get your best seed. Come on. Come on. So as you purpose, stand on your feet. I'm declaring over every person in this place. I prayed for you before I came here today. They know God is blessing us corporately in here. There's a personal breakthrough that God has for you. Even you woman with those glasses right there that just stood up. Just put both your hands up. That's right. You right there. Yes, you with the black blazer on. Just lift your hands up. Yes, just for you. Somebody say just for me. Now, Father, I thank you because this seed has secured a spot in the future that cannot be erased. Father, I thank you for the supernatural harvest. I thank you for the closings. I thank you for the congratulations. I thank you for the promotions. I thank you for the land. I thank you for the property. I thank you for the buildings. I thank you for the expansion. I thank you for the strategies. I thank you for the solutions. I thank you that you've given them space on the shelves. I thank you, Father, that they are sought after. I thank you, Father, for great increase, multiplication. I thank you, oh God, for debt cancellation in the name of Jesus, divine settlements. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, my God. Yet I'm on the yourself. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting ready to move in. Hallelujah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Without a security down payment. Yep. You getting ready to move in. You're not going to even have to pay for the first three months. You getting ready to move in. Hallelujah. Yep. Some of you for the first six months, you're not going to have to pay a dime. Favor has hit that deal. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, come and plant your seeds right here on the altar. Hallelujah. Say, it's already settled. The harvest is great. Ah, yeah. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. You're not going to pay what they paid. Yeah, The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. God has given you treasures in the dark. He's lighting up the spot for you to be in. Sometimes God got to push you out to bring you in. Sometimes he got to push you out to bring you in. How do I know? Because the building we use for the down payment for the last property that when we got the 16 deeds, we wouldn't have went into that property if we didn't get kicked out of the one we was in. Y'all think some of the hell was because God was against you. 
but he was making you arrive on time. We had fixed that property up, Pastor Trina. We had renovated it. We had invested money. We had paid on time. And then the owner put us out. How do you think that felt? But if he didn't put us out, the building that we moved to and we purchased, we would have missed because the owner was getting ready to leave the country. Sometimes God got to put you out to make you arrive on time. And the down payment for where we went to was the building we was pushed into. Lord, somebody moved into your down payment for bigger, for more, for greater, for expansion. You wouldn't have what you were about to see if you didn't go through the hell you went through. So I want you to take 10 seconds and praise God for being pushed out. What do you do with a baby? You push it out. Somebody ought to praise God for being pushed out. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Because you were pushed out to be pushed into world. And if you would have saw what God was going to bring you to, you would have ran that's why some of y'all glad your ex left you I'm going to my seat I got a good friend and you gonna praise God right here went to church Sunday morning with her children when she got back home her husband left her and the kids she was devastated she was shook she was pushed out of a marriage he left her her family was wrecked she had to get counseling this ain't a made up story this a real one she thought she was gonna lose her mind she was pushed out of her comfort zone but long story short, she built a company and the company grew from millions, went into billion status. The husband wanted to come back, meet with the attorneys and say, what's my part? The attorney said, you have no part. You divorced her. You pushed her out. Some of y'all don't realize that some folks had to get out of your life before your harvest came. They had to get out of your life before this big breakthrough. They had Push your neighbor and say, he pushed you out to bring you in. He pushed you out to bring you in. Double favor. Double favor. Ah, whatever you touch, don't prosper. Hey, they had to push on out, but God to bring you in to a wealthy place, to a noble place, to a featured place, to a favored place, to a glorious place. Oh, they thought they killed you. Oh, I didn't tell you that part. One of our enemies was walking around, having a party, telling everybody, guess who died? Making announcements, throwing parties, saying my husband was dead. They celebrated too soon. They thought you were dead. you were dead. They thought you were done. They thought you were over. But you were up. Let them talk. Let them lie. They're your publicist. 
Somebody said to my I thought you were dead. They thought Jesus was dead too. But the script already wrote the resurrection. Somebody ought to praise him. Because the path is already set. Pray the path. Pray the path. Pray the path. Pray the path. Pray the path.
be here tomorrow night. It's going to happen out the gate. Get up here early. You're such a leader. I called her out because of your prayers for her. Woo! That's so you know how powerful your prayers are. They ain't pitiful. They're powerful. take teams out to evangelize 18 years old 17 years old and I would train them they were old enough to be my parents but I had a strategy from God how to take the neighborhoods you won't follow the crowd but you'll be the leader of the pack it's a righteous crew it's a set apart crew it's a group radical for God unashamed and unapologetic the Lord releases to you wisdom beyond your years, beyond your grade, beyond your scholarship, beyond what you studied in the natural books. God, as you spend time in the word of God and in God's presence, the Lord is revealing to you mysteries. God's going to blow your mind and how he uses you. I see you being shocked, saying that was me. It was the power of God working through you. And then sometimes you feel like, you know what, you can hear God, but you're afraid to open your mouth. But the spirit of the Lord is taking over you so strongly, I've been there, so strongly, that before you can talk yourself out of being used from God, or used by God, it'll be too late. You already said it. That power. Whew! That power. Glory! Hey! Mighty! Woo! Y'all praise God for these two men. 
They're young, but they're called. They're young, but they're chosen. They're young, but they're consecrated. They're young. Watch and see. I don't even know their name. represents men. It's a radical move of God tucked on the inside of you. Oh, my Lord. They're looking at all the stuff out here and it's like, ah! But they don't even know God got a secret place. And you are part of that. And when they step up, it's the showdown. And it's like the days of Elijah where the battles of God, if your God be God, come on, they're going to call upon their God. And the God that answers by fire, <laughs> signs and wonders will follow you. You will declare and it will happen. And they will call in their strange gods and nothing will happen. Oh, my God. I hear you saying things like a, when they tell you they serve other gods, you're going to say, how is that working for you? And the Lord is going to speak for you by the manifestation, the proof. The visuals, the support, the aid, the show up, the show out, the shut down. They're going to attempt to do things, and it's not even going to work. They're going to try, and then you're going to go forth. It's going to shut it down. God's going to speak loudly through you, clearly through you. He's going to use you as a sign and a wonder. In these last days, you are part of God's secret, set-apart elite for special cases, places, and assignments that God has called you to. Put your hands together and give the Lord praise. Thank you for allowing me to serve here tonight. I love y'all. I love y'all. I'm giving you a big hug. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to be here tonight. I did bring a few things I forgot. I'm <laughs> I brought a few things. I brought some, what, I, what I'm wearing and necklaces. I brought some of the stuff here. I'm going to give you a good harvest. I'm going to sow that because I'm going to give you a good harvest. I love y'all. I thank you for staying. It says what you say about God. Being so reverential to the Lord. You could have been like, huh? It's past 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock at my bedtime. And know y'all be binge watching. But you prioritize the presence of the Lord. I salute you. And I honor you, and I thank God for your yes to the Lord. It's been a privilege serving here tonight. Thank you. Would you please put your hands together for the ministry and the gift of prophetess, evangelist, Medina Pullins. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I tell you, I am so full I, am, I have cried. One of the inventions that somebody needs to make in here is some real waterproof eyelash glue because I told my husband that he had to get up because I done ugly cried. You start prophesying and laying hands on the babies and something happens in the inside of me because from the very beginning, I've been believing God for a generation of youth that will cry out to God that are not embarrassed to call on his name and that gets the experience of knowing Jesus. Woo! I don't even want my children to depend on my testimony. I want them to be able to stand up and say, I know God for myself. Woo! So I'm telling you, I go into deep, ugly cry. When you start messing with the babies, I go into deep, ugly cry because that is my intercession. That is my prayer that these children around here speaking in tongues and laying hands on each other and decreeing and declaring because we have to set up a youth that for the next this generation coming up that is not ashamed of Jesus and who won't believe what's being taught in these schools. And they're actually going to believe in Jesus Jesus, 
who is the God of their salvation. I believe revival is coming back to our schools. I may not get there. I may not have a pass to get in the doors, but if I teach them Jesus, woo! Thank you, Lord. I believe these babies are going to one day correct the teachers when they start teaching about God does not exist. And we came from that theory and that theory. We're going to have a legion of kids in the school that will raise up and say, no, no, no. Let me introduce you to my God. So I get right full. I get right full. And then I just thank God for the promises of God and how I, I don't know her personally. You, I feel like we know each other personally, but we've watched each other from the sidelines. Everything she said, I know came straight from God. I know it did. So I believe God for what he's doing. This conference has been amazing. Not for nothing, but it has been amazing. We have gotten the true word of God. I know for me, I, I, I'm going to let you leave because I really want you to be back early in the morning. Um, but my sister here in the pink, I, I, mm, something in my spirit has been uh, pulled to you for the last, it seemed like week. Um, I don't want you to sit in the back. You're not allowed to sit in the back any longer. Yes, you. You pointing to you. You're not allowed to sit in the back any longer. I don't care if you had a VIP ticket or not. There's something about you that God is calling you out of hiding. You've been a place of hiding, but God is... I just upgraded you to VIP. Yes, Lord. Let me lay my hands on you. You just got upgraded in the natural and in the spirit. God is doing something to your life. He's upgrading, upgrade, 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 upgrade. Yonda so yonda There's a desperation on your life. And you've served God when it wasn't popular. You've been praying in secret, but God said, I'm calling you out. And may this blessing change your whole household. I don't understand what your living situation is, but God said, I'm changing it. You're going to ownership in the name of Jesus. Ownership, 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 ownership. No more second hand. God said, I'm giving you quality, 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 quality. Yes! What the name of Somebody get her a VIP pass because God said, I'm showing you something in the natural. I'm upgrading your life. I'm upgrading your family. I'm upgrading your situation. I'm changing your surroundings. The blessings and the favor. Blessings and favor. Blessings and favor. Blessings and favor. We're Messiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's calling you out of the back. No more back. I want you to be here. Be here. I don't know what your work schedule is, but I want you to be here. Tomorrow morning, I don't want you to lose your job, but tomorrow morning, I want you to be here. Tomorrow afternoon, every session, whatever VIP get, you get. Yes, Lord Jesus, don't sit in the back and bring your friend with you. Bring your friend with you. She's allowed to have as many guests as she wants to for free. I'll pay for it. So I want you to go get your friends. Get the ones who said they're not coming to church. Get the ones who said they were hurt by church people. Go tell them there's a lady that said that God loves us. She's going to show us what it's like to be treated with love. What am I saying I'm not? I want y'all to treat her with love. Show her love. Show her that she has community. Show her that this is what family does. Oh! The devil wanted to kill you. He wanted your whole entire life. That's because hell is threatened by your existence. There's something in you. There's something inside of you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord! Yeah, no, 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 say, I'm not. He's changing.
changing it. He's changing it. I know you don't look like church, but that's what we want to see. We want the unchurched. Yes! What the number show you that? It is for you. It is for you. You said that's not for me. God said, change your language. It is for you. It is for you. It is for you. Dream big. Watch God answer your prayers. Stop putting limitations on what you can have. The favor of the Lord. If they said no, they're going to have to say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm serious. Get your friends. Tell them to come. Come. Somebody, you tell them, somebody just gave us a free pass. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sow it. Sow it. That was on my heart. I didn't say it. But whoever wants to sow in her life, come on. This is what family does. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And I understand. But only if you have it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Make sure she gets that. Yes, Lord. Take it. Stick it in her pocketbook. Thank you, Lord. Whoever got something else, stick it in her pocketbook. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm a show yanda. Yes, love, I'm a show yanda. She thought she was going to be broke. She thought she wasn't going to have gas money. She thought her rent wasn't going to be paid. Where's her friend? Somebody tell me her cash app. I'm a show yanda. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who's her friend? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She don't, she don't have Cash App, so if you want to Cash App it, Cash App it to me and put in there, what's her name? Kayla. Put in the memo field, Kayla. I'll know, I'll make sure she gets it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm Cash App T. Hairston Ministries, right? That's my Cash App T. Hairston Ministries. Yeah, put in the memo field, Kayla. And we're going to make sure Kayla get it. Kayla just got upgraded. Kayla, I'm going to show y'all. You can believe God because it can fall on you too. God is upgrading lives tonight. Ah, he's upgrading your life tonight. This is proof that God moves. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Y'all make room for them. They're my special guests for the rest of this conference. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's late. There's so much I want to do, but it's late. Where's Janae? Where's my daughter, Janae? Come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Hurry, hurry. Well, go slow, but hurry. Don't fall, but hurry. Because God is upbraiding her life too. Yeah. She got special circumstances, but God is upgrading her life. And I, I'm going to pull her up here. She's not going to like this, but I'm going to pull her up here because I want her to see her future. The enemy thought her future was going to go one way, but I want her to see what her future really looks like. Sometimes all you need is a bird's eye view. 
You know, you go up in the plane and you see things differently than what you see them on the ground. So I want you to get used to this because this is what your future looks like. Your future looks like ministry. Your future looks like prophesying. Your future looks like intercession. Your future looks like breakthrough. I don't care what the enemy says and I don't care what he has planned. God's plan trumps any plan of the enemy. What about Shayanda? Yes, Lord. You see people like Caleb. Those are the kind of people that you're called to. The kind that really don't believe. And it took a lot for them to get here. I know you're very unchurched. This is my most unchurched baby. But God is using her. He's using her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Shoyanda. Yay. Dream big, daughter. Dream big, daughter. Dream big. Yay. Oh, na na ma shea. Dream big. Oh. Yeah, na na ma shea. You've got the ancient oil. The mantle. Yeah, na ma shea. From even your grandmothers and your grandfathers rust on your life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, na ma shea. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. What am I show ya? He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. And I got a new baby inside of here. He's doing it for you, Saul. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for Saul. He's setting her up for her future. No lack. I'm not sure yet. No lack in the name of Jesus. We speak good mental health. Stability in the mind. In the name of Jesus, we're taking sorrow out of the womb. Oh, and we're placing blessings even in the womb. In the name of Jesus, you've got a legacy to carry. You've got a legacy to carry. There's something being birthed in the natural and the spiritual. And we call it forth in the name of Jesus with no hindrances. Oh, Yay! The power of God rest in your belly. The power of God even in your womb. Song, you will come out prophesying. You will come out laying on hands. You will be a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. Evangelize. Tell the future generation that a God lives in the name of Jesus. Oh! Yes, I'm ashamed. Where's her brother? Come hug her brother. Come hug her. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When the evangelist was talking about her children, I started dancing over there with my arms stretched out because I believe God was taking all of me and my children higher in the name of Jesus. And I know there's somebody in here who's believing God for your children. I will almost show. Angie, I got you. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, Lord. God hears your prayers. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Delayed but not denied. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, I dare you to call your children's name out in the atmosphere. Put their name on it. Put their name in the atmosphere. Oh! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This one is for my children. Yeah. I told you there's something about the babies. This one is for our children. You might not have had children yet. Speak to your womb. There's eggs in there. Speak to your womb. Yeah, Gentlemen, speak to your Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'm not sure. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'm not sure. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
stand your feet with all. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, you and your sons were made for signs and wonders. Don't let the enemy tell you that he's going to get your children. The devil is a liar. He will not hate. He will not take your children. They will not be consumed. They will not be stolen. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the trick of the enemy has been canceled. In the, and whatever he has planned for your children, I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Let this be a testimony that the trick did not work. The assignment and the attack of the enemy did not work on your life or for your children. They shall be free. They shall be made whole. And it is so. Stand to your feet. We're going home. Thank you, Lord. Meet us in the morning. Meet us all day. I'm going to say this. I don't want to take us out of this moment, but the Lord has given me a burden for men and the men of God in this season. This is not a woman's conference. So I want you to make sure you can, every man you can make connection with, get them here tomorrow night. I believe the Lord has something specific to say to the men of this region. So get them here and watch the Lord change their lives tomorrow. This is my plea to you. That God, God's going to do something special in the men tomorrow night. We're not discounting the women. Women, we praise God for you. We thank God for all that has happened. But the devil is a liar. He will not have the men of this region. He's trying to abort the plan of God for the men here. But he's going to lose that attack too. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all that you've said and done tonight. Again, we are just amazed. We are amazed that we get to sit in your plan and watch it unfold. And even in the tough times and in the tough seasons of your plan, we trust you. But we know that you are with us. Now, as we leave this place, Father, we thank you because we know that the protection that you have set for us in the form of guardian angels has already gone before us. There will be no incident, no accident, no attack, no theft in the name of Jesus that will keep us from our destinations. Our homes will be at peace. We will have sweet sleep and we will come back tomorrow giving you more praise and glory. And it is so now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Yes, Lord, to the only wise God, our Savior, be all the glory, majesty, dominion, and power. All of God's people, lift your hand and say, God, thank you for doing it again. See you tomorrow. God bless you.